And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Your host, KELP Kennedy Lucas, of course. We're back for another exciting uh, podcast here today. This is the Beyond Swanky Podcast. Of course, we've got T up in the building. What up, what up, what up? Feels good to be back in the studio, of course, for another exciting podcast. Of course, I'm behind the mic and in front of the computer and make sure that we sound good tonight, Kennedy. And of course, we got Coco in the building as well. You guys liked the last episode we did. Of course, we had Coco come on. He tells us our story, his story, and then we kind of, we kind of chime in a little bit there. So I'm very, I'm humbled, right? I'm very, very humbled for you to tell your story, man. And I cannot wait for another exciting episode tonight. But before we get to that, I promised this organization that I was going to give them their shout outs. We're doing a whole shout out thing for them this week. And of course, we got to get them shout outs because I promised them them shout outs for sure. But this is something and very exciting that they're doing, of course, a huge shout out to GGC Get Involved. T, you remember GGC. We all remember GGC, of course, Georgia Gwinnett College, our alpha mater, where we graduated from, got a bachelor's degree from. And get this, T, they got their podcast. Wow. Like when I went. okay, so I got their their, uh, message, their, their DM today. Um, of course, we were in the KLP Entertainment Office. The Emory Office of Kennedy Lucas uh, Patterson was closed today because we had fall break and gave me time to work on some schoolwork. You guys know I'm a grad student. Um, it, got, it gave me time to work on that kind of stuff and then get prepared for tonight's show and then do some preparations for later announcements today. T, you were part of that meeting this morning, so we're going to announce something. Uh, uh, an update with our new film alongside with Hardline, Second Term, Eden Prime, but we'll get into that later on. But GGC, Georgia Gwinnett College, get involved. Of course, they have their own podcast. It's called Voice of the Students Podcast. It's available right now on major platforms such as this one you're listening to our show on right now, Spotify or or Heard Radio. They're also available for YouTube. And get this, they have a YouTube channel. So a huge shout out to them. I'm so proud that they're starting this uh, this podcast out there for sure because it's very very exciting it's very very exciting that you know you have an organization especially ggc you know alpha monitor again uh they start in the podcast they're starting it back up so congratulations to them of course they've got that coming up for sure of course they are a part of the student involvement center at ggc obviously and this is the second season for the podcast so that's pretty good when you go two seasons in now you know and it's good i hope that they keep that up t I really do. I hope they keep that train going because KLP Aftermath, we're on our fourth season. So we've been doing four seasons so far. And then next spring, we'll hit our fifth season. Oops, did I just spoil it, T, that we got renewed for a new season already? And season four is not even over. Anyway, (laughs) Uh, so very, very excited for that. Uh, I'm excited for for what they're going to bring out to the table. Of course, they record on Wednesdays between 12 and 4. And then they upload episode each Friday around 1 p.m. So... A huge congratula- huge congratulations for them, for sure. Of course, uh, of course, they also have a link to the GGC students to sign up to be to become guests on the show. Of course, I'm going to share that in our link description below, and in, in all our, our link descriptions below. Whether it's if, if you're watching uh, the video version of tonight's podcast on YouTube, if you're listening to it on Spotify and our Heart Radio, our big players uh, again, Spotify, our Heart Radio, Google Podcasts, Jovi Savvy. Um, Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher Podcast. You know, we're going to have that for the links uh, on our link description below, T. Because um, if you want to become a guest on the show, please feel free. I would love to become a guest on their show. I might even sign up for it. I, I know I'm not a GGC student anymore. I'm graduated. Graduated two years ago. I get it. But, you know, from one podcaster to another podcaster, I would love to be on the show to talk about podcasting. Um, so very exciting so congratulations ggc student involvement get involved with their podcast voice of the students uh podcast we're going to be doing promotion for them all week congratulations to you all i want to give you all a special shout out and sponsor for today's show the beyond swanky podcast now coco i'm seeing you you looking at me like hey can they wrap up the intro what you got going on this week coco another day another failed relationship womp 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 you sit around asking yourself why after yet another meaningless masturbation session (laughs) 
on a girl from high school's OnlyFans account. Now, that is true because I have a not a lot of, of high school friends that have an OnlyFans account. But now, and I can call them out to you, but now I'm seeing that there are some of some girls that I follow on Facebook. Yes, I still use Facebook um, who have an OnlyFans account. And you'd be surprised, right? You'd be surprised because I've seen it. And I say, oh, such and such, Sally Sue, she, we went to high school together. She was, she was a little, little rough, but you know, she, she now has an OnlyFans account and you, you see it and you know, uh, you see a lot of risque photos and then they, they, they tell you, Hey, go follow my OnlyFans account. Go subscribe, go, go put some money out there. So that way you can, uh, see all what you want to see, see, hmm. but then maybe you find someone else. But it still doesn't work out. And you're, you feel like you're stuck in this loop. Mm. Mm. This loop of getting in relationships and them not working out. But you just want to be in a relationship so bad. You, you think to yourself, God, why me? Why is it me? Why, why doesn't it work out for me? I'll tell you why. Because you're going into relationships for the wrong reason, my nigga. A lot of y'all like to get into relationships. Not knowing why you want to be in a relationship. Not wanting anything further than anything else. Than, than sex and just, just this, this social media mentality of what relationships should be. All right. And uh, hey, we about to get into it, y'all. Um, thank you, Coco, for being in the studio for sure. You're always uh, a treat for sure. We about to get into it, y'all. It's gonna be one of those podcasts now. I know a lot of people prefer my podcast to be a little different nowadays, but yeah, it's it's gonna be that kind of podcast. We talking about relationships now. As Coco mentioned two seconds ago, you know, a lot of people do want to get in relationships because of maybe uh in a rush into it and not really trying to figure out so we're gonna have a deep dive conversation uh here today on the beyond swanky podcast um and i'm excited i'm very very excited for that um for me uh i ain't in the relationship so i can only give y'all what what i see on, on my end and hopefully y'all like comment and subscribe to uh the channel and, and everything else but yeah let's get into it coco a lot of y'all don't belong in relationships at all. A lot of y'all should be single forever. If it were up to me, I would do that for a lot of y'all. Because, you know, I can understand wanting companionship, wanting a partner, wanting someone to quote unquote love you. However, you get into these romantic relationships. And you're expecting so much of this person, and a lot of times you expect you're trying to you're expecting to do so little. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I actually do know what you mean, Coco. Um, I've had a lot of uh, relationships in in the past, and first time this first time you're hearing it, Kennedy. Um, <laughs> uh, this was the first time. Well, I've had relationships before, and I've had women who wanted a lot like i mean a lot in it came when it came down to relationship and back then and we always say before we were more enlightened more before we were uh gentlemen's in our in our, in our prime in our league um we were expecting to do a lot right where we were expecting to 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 prevail a lot in a relationship and sometimes my first thought is, you know, when you get ready to do a lot, the pressure becomes high. And when the pressure becomes high in that relationship, then things may not go as, as seen. Things may not be as perfect as you want them to be. And now feelings are hurt. Now the expectation was set high, but you, you perform low. So... Um, I definitely know know what that means when you're setting the expectations too high into a uh, relationship. I've seen a lot of people get into relationships and they like 
oh, well, you know, they're supposed to, this person's supposed to do this for me. This person is supposed to do that for me. I have very high standards. Like you don't though. Uh, my my thing about that, Coco, is too, because we're, we're in this generation and we're all super young. So we kind of classify uh, as Gen Z, we we have the these high expectations in a relationship, and uh, oh yeah, she she's supposed to do that for me, or oh, I'm supposed to do that for her, and I think that's a load of bullshit. I honestly do. I don't believe in having kind of a, a routine there. I don't believe in having that expectation. I don't believe that you know I have to do this thing for my girl. Now, I don't want to be. You know, I wouldn't be disrespectful to my girl, but like if there's things that she wants that I physically can't give her or can't do for her, then she should have that knowledge and know, okay, he can't do that for me, but it's okay because I still love him. Maybe he'll do something kind of in that same direction, but with a little bit of a little bit of a pivot, a little bit of a twist. I hate it when couples set that standard for them that oh she's supposed to do that, he's supposed to do that, because that to me seems like a very not old school type of way of thinking and a lot of new generations they're learning how to do that now and it's 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 weird to me you don't you ever hear some of these people a lot of the times on my end and y'all let me know how it is for you Mm -hmm. but on my end it's always i always hear these same shorties saying the same shit niggas ain't this niggas ain't that they need to do this they need to do that they need to do this but they bring nothing to the table they bring nothing yeah and that's that's true i've had a lot of relationships uh well not a a whole lot but i had relationships in the past where um when i had girlfriends and they 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 haven't been motivated about anything right nothing motivates them nothing they're just here just and i get it we're all just here we're living we're doing the best we can but i guess for me and again that's probably why i'm still single and looking for my, my mrs right because a lot of these girls now, they're not motivated for nothing. Like, they don't want to... Some, let me re- re- rephrase that before we get canceled. Some women don't... They're not motivated to do anything in a relationship. No, Not motivated about their, their career, their education, the success that they want to do, the projects they want to do. What's your favorite hobby? What do, you, what do you like to do? Do you like to cook? What's your favorite thing to cook? The, a lot of girls, they're not motivated about anything but, but social media, right? Social media gets them going. And when a, a, a women in a relationship, when they bring that up to the table and they say, oh, we ain't shit. And you look at them like, okay, so what what are you doing? Because I'm we trying something and you're not motivated at, about anything. And that's just my, my, my experience on that one. And not on no Kevin Samuels tank, because we all know how I feel about him. Rest in peace. You know, but on a on a just human being tank. They gotta pay for everything. They gotta do this, they gotta do that. And then they're not doing any you're not holding up your end of the bargain okay what are you doing in return pussy isn't enough and hopefully for for niggas for niggas and people out there who think dick or pussy is enough to keep you happy um you know you need to talk to a therapist of about why you let your stepdad touch you as a kid, you know? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know too I don't know nothing about that about that which you just stated, but I do know um I do know about, you know, having to pay for for everything. Now, um when it's and, and I and I this is where I kinda I agree, but I kinda differ, right? Because when it's your first date, you know, for me, yeah, I'm paying for the first date, right? Um I do agree with you, Coco, on the point that, you know, when you're when you're in this relationship and you've gone to many, many dinners and dates before, then, yeah, it should be 50 50. I am in this new school and I hate old old heads that that go for old tradition. And yeah, the man's supposed to pay for everything. Like I stated earlier, that's such a old tradition. And now that we're young and we're in this newer generation and things are changing, there's nothing wrong with going 50 50 on a date right if she wants to pay for it then yeah let her pay for it right let her pay for it um on the second point that you you brought up too uh, about you know uh, you know dick and, and and pussy that's not always the the thing that was going to keep you happy in life right i know a lot of a, a lot of my my guy friends for an example 
they and some of my guy friends, not my close friends, not my mafia squad. Shout out to them. They 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 don't talk like this, but I had a lot of friends in the outer circle where they just want to say, "Oh yeah, I just want to smash. Oh, I just want to fuck." Like I ain't looking for nothing else. That pussy's gonna get me happy. But I'm like, okay, is it really gonna get you happy, or or you just are you just not really motivated by anything but just smashing? Now I tend to remember like, oh, okay, yeah, we were young, right? A lot of younger younger kiddos you know they that's all they think about is sex and that's normal in the teenage years but now i have some friends very few friends that talk like that at our age grade right because now we're 26 and i'll be 27 in in next may and you know as we get older then we're talking about okay sex is good but like what can she bring to the table can she bring accountability can she bring uh, stability into our relationship Right. And I think that's what like that's what a lot of gentlemen should should look for it to is that stability. Like, is that that true love outside of sex? What else can she bring to the table to make you truly happy? Sex and, and vagina it's not truly happiness. Um, that's that's really that's really what needs to go on right now. You really need to you have some unresolved issues that you need to go to therapy for because what the fuck is going on? You know, like, that that cannot go on. Um, that's not okay. Relationship, I always say, is is an equal partnership, and not equal as in fifty fifty, as in a hundred, a hundred, a hundred percent to you, a hundred percent to them. I'd never heard that one before. That's that's a good one. You know what I mean? It's not not anything else, because you don't want to be in in a situation where you feel like you're doing all the heavy lifting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A lot of people be out here complaining. I've seen niggas and shorties sit here and complain and complain, posting the most depressing shit. Oh, I just want someone to love me. Nobody understands me. Nobody gets me. And the whole time they have somebody. They're in a long, year, years long committed relationship. They are in, like, they are married and doing this. Y'all know how I feel about marriage. Uh, I have a different opinion on, on, on marriage, but that's that's another podcast for another day. You don't belong in a relationship if that's how you move. You don't belong in no relationship if that's really how you're moving right now. You cannot be in no relationship. If you are on social media talking about people ain't shit and no one understands you and this and that, okay, buy a vibrator. And get the fuck out of your relationship. Because I know for a fact your partner, whoever that is behind the scenes, they don't like that shit. They don't like that shit. There's like These are people who don't belong in relationships. There are people who get in relationships thinking that they don't have to, they, that they don't have to respect their partners. I'm sorry, but you're in a relationship. It's time. You have to make some slight changes. As to how you do things, maybe, you know, based off of, you know, love language and whatever fucking riffraff you believe in, you know, like, you know, maybe your partner is someone who likes to know the things that you're doing. Now, obviously, have that conversation about what's acceptable to know and not, and then go from there. But if you're partying every night and this and that, your partner doesn't know about it. Do you think you belong into in a relationship? And it's okay. And that's a good question you just asked. It's okay if your answer is no, right? Because I had a lot of people ask me, oh, how's the dating life? How's it? Maybe I'm not ready, right? Maybe I'm not ready to have somebody move in. Definitely not ready for that. Not married, not ready for marriage and kids quite just yet. I do like to hang out. Not, I like to flirt, right? T, T, you see me flirt, you know, I, I like to flirt. So maybe I'm not ready for that relationship. And to, to the point, it's OK if you're not. We, we have such a in our generation, we have it to where, you know. Oh, you have to get in the relationship because you're not getting any younger. Right. It's the same kind of phrase where our parents would tell them, oh, oh, our parents would tell, them, oh, when are we going to have some grandbabies because we ain't getting younger. And I, and I always tell them, no, no, right? I joke with my parents. They ask me sometimes. And it's rare that they ask me, but they ask me sometimes. And I joke, I said, and I do this this thing, T, and you see me do it before. I was like, uh, uh, kids, uh, marriage, uh, oh, sorry, I just got sick, 
right? So maybe it's okay to not be ready, right? And to your point, Coco, if you're out to the club and you you partying every night and you flirting with 100 different women, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, maybe you're not ready for that relationship, right? To your point again, Coco, you have to move your girl in and maybe you got some habits that you you prone on doing and she's not familiar with that. Now you got to change that whole thing up, right? So it's okay to be not ready, right? I joke and I say, hey, hey, I'm ready for, for a girlfriend. I'm ready for this. But am I truly ready? Am I truly ready for what comes with it, right? What comes with the the chances of having a girlfriend? Maybe I'm wrong, right? Um, but like I said, it's okay. It's okay to, to not be ready. Where you think you don't have to communicate these things to people. I don't think you do. Keep it a buck fifty, you know. I don't think you belong in no relationship. Um, I don't know where you get off saying this and that. I don't know. There's there's some people, there's some shorties out here. Y'all know who you are. Y'all know who you are, who wonder why they are not in relationships, but sit here and revel in the fact that multiple men, multiple women, multiple toasters, <laughs> multiple dishwashers multiple iron boards, multiple fucking hair curlers and flat irons, multiple fucking desktop screens, multiple whatever the fuck you, you, you're attracted to are in their DMs or are trying to talk to them and try to hit them up on a daily basis. Listen, gentlemen, ladies, everything in between, you already know what to do. You don't fuck with those people. These are people who don't belong in relationships. Because people like this who crave attention from multiple people cannot know. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Nah. Like, you can't do that. There's one There's one little uh, Snap series that I watch on Snapchat. It's called Phone Swap. Oh, that sounds good. And... If you haven't seen it, it's basically two people, random people go on. It's like a blind date. They go on and, you know, they uh, swap. They make them swap phones and they look through each other's phone. Oh, couldn't do it. I, I got some secrets. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I was watching an episode uh, earlier today. Watching an episode uh, earlier today. And basically the episode was... The, the 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 shorty on the episode was like, oh, I love snooping through people's stuff. I lo love looking through people's stuff. See shit like that? Mm -mm. Oh, no, 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 no. See, to, to Kennedy's point, that probably wouldn't be for me either because I, I actually had a, a, a girl, an old flame, that loved to go through my stuff. Uh, and it got worse. She started almost snooping into my... Uh, financials, and I said, nope, can't do it, can't do it, so, no, nope. uh, 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 uh. no sense of privacy, no sense of trust, nah, bro, you can't be with people like that, this is why you don't have a relationship, this is why your relationships always fail, maybe you don't know how to communicate, which is 99% of people who move out here, and here's the, and here's the funny thing with social media, I was touching on this earlier, but, Everyone moves completely different, unless, of course, you're King Coco. But other than that, everyone moves like an absolute fucking bitch in real life. In real life. There are so many people who on social media are the hardest human beings on earth. But then in person, quiet, mouse, crickets, nothing from them. You don't hear them. They don't matter because they're nobodies. They're losers. You don't want to be the person who gets with... This super hard body on social media. And then in real life, they're absolute fucking loser. I don't care about that, that physical feature shit. I don't care about all that. I'm talking again. If you, if you watch my episode on personality catfishing, you already know what I'm about to say. Cause that's the type of shit. Social media, they act like something else and they act like, and then, then their true self in person, they're absolute fucking loser, unmotivated, don't do shit, broke as hell. Don't have any ambition, no career path in line, nothing, no hustle, no drive, no, no, not, nothing interesting about them, nothing to them. They're too two dimensional, you know, one dimensional. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I and that Coco, I agree because a lot of a lot of people that I've known and 
uh, obviously no longer talked to nowadays, um, I see their see them on their Instagram, and I say, "Oh, that's nice. You're doing all this and this and this and this, but can you can you walk the walk? Can you talk the talk?" Right? Um, I, for an example, a lot of people when they see us on our Instagram, especially my personal, um, they they say, "Oh, Kennedy's catfishing. Oh, Kennedy's just doing this for the gram." But in real life, I'm really doing this stuff, right? And the the real ones, my close friends are are, are people. They know, oh yeah, that's Kennedy. Kennedy's doing some some. He's doing some creative things, right? I'm walking the walk and trying to talk the talk at the same time. Um, I think social media, even though we kind of like it a little, you know, social media influence people to betray a different character to, to portray that ego betray that different personality on social media because they know it's on it's only on social media you can't really go to somebody's home or go to somebody's uh, place of business in real life and see oh, okay this ain't what you posted and then now you quiet because you you know again you quiet no personality you could be broke too and that's one thing that all of us try to do here is, hey, when we post, hey, this is real, right? A lot of people say, oh, you work for institute. Yeah, we do. I work for Emory, Emory University. No cap, right? Um, so it's just a, it's a lot of differences when it comes to that because I think it's the, it's the social media, right? But it's people trying to portray somebody else, right? And for me, again, and everybody's, all of our Instagram, real people. Real people trying to do some creative things now. We're trying to make it in the, this thing called the entertainment business. Um, but we, we walk the walk and we talk the talk at the same time. And I think that's what people are struggling with. Also, uh, certain people in our generation. These are the people that, that uh, are always in these failed relationships. Maybe you're somebody who thinks your looks will take you all the way. I'm going to tell you right now, they won't. Ain't nobody give a fuck about that. Niggas, if you think, oh, I'm a light skinned, this and that, I'm good looking, and you think that you could just get tings like that, good luck. Black is beautiful. Um, that's what I got to say on that one because the the color colorism in that. Oh, I'm light skinned, so I'm beautiful. There's a lot of people that are light skinned, dark skin, in between, brown skin. Red bone, yellow bone, black bone, you know, there's a lot of people uh, that are beautiful, right? So I, I, I personally hate it when our people in, in our community use colorism and say, hey, light skin is beautiful than dark skin. That's not true at all, right? Because you can be light skin, like I said, you can be light skin, dark skin, yellow bone, red bone, black bone, blue bone, whatever you want to call it. Black is beautiful. And that's something we something else we have to get out of our generation that that because you're lighter, you're you have a lighter complexion. Right. You have your your uh, your uh, community colleagues that might have a darker shade than you do. That doesn't make them ugly. Right. I've seen a lot of beautiful women that are dark skin. Right. I'm, I, I have a lighter complexion myself. Y'all see me. I don't think I'm hot shit just because I'm light skinned. And we got to get out of that, that generation. We got to get out of that, that mold. Because you're going to be in so many relationships, probably going to catch AIDS, probably going to catch, like, something's going to happen where your nipples are going to fall off or whatever the fuck. And it's not going to be a good time. And then you're going to come back and listen to this and be like, wow, Coco was right. Yeah, I'm always right. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's really nothing to it. Y'all, y'all think that looks are just everything? Y'all think looks are everything? Same with you, ladies. That's not everything. I've seen some absolutely stunning, and I mean, mm, mm, some fine asses. Mm, mm, mm. Like some beautiful black, dark skinned women that you just want to melt over ice cream the way their skin pretty and sweet like hot fudge. Truth. I've seen beautiful light skinned women, brown skinned women. I've seen I've seen so many beautiful, beautiful women which walk around and then you speak to them and and, and it's and it's literally like you are conversing with uh, an NPC. That's the type of thing they're on. You're in an RP you're playing an RPG game 
and you're conversing with an NPC. Yo, hey, babes, what's your name? Um, I like, uh, I like Casamigos, and I like, um, to go to Rebel, and I like, um, to go and eat at Cactus Club. Oh, my God. That's so true. I went on dates, and, and women talk like that, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, this date is not going nowhere because there's no personality there. Hmm. You boring bird brain bitch. Can you please, like, pardon me. Like, this is, that's the type of shit that I'm talking about, man. How absolutely fucking boring and lame are you? That, the looks aren't going to get you in a relationship. Let alone a fucking stable one. You don't belong in any relationship at all. Hang on, if you if you have severe and I mean severe trust issues, don't be in a relationship. If you have severe insecurities about yourself, don't be in a relationship. Don't do that. You're just going to you're just going to fuck it up for both parties. Nobody wants to be sitting here and every single day Imagine calling your girl beautiful and she's like, no, I'm not. No. Damn, no confidence there. Don't imagine that. <laughs> Don't imagine that because that isn't sick. Imagine calling your man handsome and he's like, I don't think so. No. 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 We're supposed to be getting hand jobs. We're not supposed to be moving like Handy Manny. That's all I'm saying, big dogs. That's all I'm saying, man. Like, we, we just keep it a buck over here. Like, we're not here to fix people. You're not here to babysit. That's very weird. If you are a rapist. And God forbid, if you are. Don't be in a relationship. What do you mean by that? Oh. Well, say, for example, you want to have sex. She says no. But you still want to have sex. She's saying she's not in the mood. But you really want to have sex. So you're there trying to just, you know, force her into submission. But you think that's okay because you guys are together. And it's not. Gentlemen, let me tell you. It doesn't matter if you're married or that's your girlfriend or your fiance. If she's not in the mood, she ain't in the mood. And if you're forcing that, that still counts in some states. That still counts as rape. Doesn't matter, again, if you're married or a boyfriend or girlfriend. Hell, if she's not in the mood, you go get some lotion, you go get some some gel and, and a sock, and you go whack it out in the bathroom. That's how you get your pleasure on if she's just not interested. So that, that's my PSA out there for you, Coco. Mm-hmm. Don't be in a relationship. I, I don't know, man. Don't be in a relationship if you're a rapa man, you know, or a rapa gal. You know, don't be in no relationship if that's how you want to move. Because it goes both ways. If he doesn't want to do it, ladies, that's it. And that and that's that. Listen, you're not a teenager. Or at least I hope. I hope you're not. Um, you're grown adults. People say no. And that's just it. Move on with our lives. Even if it cheeses you. You can be cheesed. You have every right. You have every right to be annoyed. But what you don't have every right to do. Is to force yourself onto someone. You just shouldn't be in a relationship. Like, if you want to force yourself onto things, hey man, I heard six racks can get you a really nice, whatever they call them, the mannequins or whatever the fuck with the with the with the water that squirts out the pussy or whatever the fuck. Get that. There's probably even I'm pretty sure there's the male ones too. With the with the with the cool whip that comes out of the out of the the nose the the nostrils or you know whatever, I don't know how they work, but you know, you could do that instead of having to to be a weirdo. So many of you don't belong in relationships. So many of you want to do the same. You y'all just want to do the same shit. You're boring. You have nothing, no ambition. You don't have a job even. You just want to be what they what they call that. Blacking out on the term there. I I even know what the the term is, but you know they just want to be 
You know, you want to be a sugar baby, be a sugar baby. But no, that's a very specific kind of relationship. Uh, so just do that. Do whatever the fuck. I heard, I, I heard someone told me that if you put Crest toothpaste on a toothbrush and put it in your ear, anger issues gone, you know? Um, but listen, man, that's, that's not me. Uh, you could do that. But again, a lot of y'all are angry all the time and you want to go into relationships being infuriated. Yeah, and that's the lead to a lot of anger issues and, and, and relationships. And then you might display that anger towards your, your loved one, your partner. And for me, when I've been in relationships, I, I try to keep a, a cool mind uh, when I'm talking to, to my girl, right? Cool minds of all time because when you're mad, you might be frustrated and it could just be of uh, the relationship or it, could, it might just be something at work. And especially if you at work and you get mad at work, for me, when I get mad at work, I don't bring it home, right? I leave that at the door in the office. Like I ain't going to bring work home and be pissed off and then yelling at my girl and she ain't did nothing wrong, but just saying hi. And then I'm yelling at her for no apparent reason, right? So you never want to be infuriated. Like you said, don't be infuriated. Don't be mad, right? In, in your relationship. You definitely should not be in a, in a relationship if you have severe uh, anger issues. Now, when I was a, a kid myself, yeah, I used to have anger issues, right? I used to have temper, temper tantrums. But as I got older and got wiser and got smarter, got more educated, then I know that everything's okay. Not everything I have to be mad at. And nowadays, it's rare for me to get mad, right? I think the most time I get mad of something at, at, in the office that happened that shouldn't have happened that way, and then I'm a little frustrated about it. But then when I come home, I sleep like a baby at night. So again, don't be mad in your relationship. How do, how that make any sense though? I would like to know this. I would like to know how this makes sense. Everything's just gonna piss you off. There's no middle ground for you, or you take nothing seriously. They can't have a serious conversation with you. Another reason why you can't be in a relationship. Another reason you can't compliment them or take any compliments. Shouldn't be in a relationship. You know? You're unwilling to compromise on certain issues. You're unwilling to listen. Can't be in a relationship. Nope, cannot. You can't do that. Can't do that. Ask yourself these things the next time you want to ask yourself why no relationship has worked out for you. Do you move too quickly? Do you not move at a manageable pace? Is it first date official? Is it? First date, boyfriend, girlfriend. Is it no date, boyfriend, girlfriend? You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean on that one. The moving too fast. God, God, God. Yeah, I, I try to make sure I don't move too fast on a relationship because a lot of people in our generation, they, they move extremely fast, right? Some people that I, I've noticed in, in my past and a little bit of my, my, my current, a lot of people move fast and get married fast and then they're not really as happy. They might say that they happy. But they they really ain't happy because they they moved too fast. You really got to know the person first before you you move them in, before you get married, before you think about financial uh, situations together. Right. It, it's huge. It's a it's a, a huge, especially when you're bringing in a kid in this world. Right. I have a lot of friends that tell me, yeah, I, I'm, we're trying to work and work hard and get a baby. I'm like, why well, ain't you moving a little too fast there, buddy? Like, yeah, you can slow it down just a little bit. You can figure out what you truly want first before you bring a whole kid into this this messed up world we're living in right now. Are you sure you want to move her in and you got to split your financials? You want to sit down and think about it first because it's huge right now. And a lot of people ain't working right now. So a lot of people, maybe she might just be after your money, right? Like, you got to be careful. You got to really know the person first. Um, and see if you truly love that person before you dabble on into it. And that's the problem with our generation. Coco, like a lot of people, they move really quick, really, really quick. And I'm like, OK, wow, that's all it took. I'm That's a new record, you know, so I, I think people should not move too fast. Right. I know for us, we for me personally, I don't move too fast. I move at a steady pace, steady pace. So I know. Where where she uh, where she's looking at? What's her motivations? What she want to do with life? I know all about that first. 
And I think a lot of people in our generation, we, we, we have to slow, slow down, right? Especially uh, generations that are younger than me. Slow, slow down. Slow, slow down. You're young. Slow it down. Slow it way down. It ain't going nowhere. You're not on a time clock. It's not a race. Take your time. Is that how you move? Because if if that's not your pace, if that's not your, your actual genuine pace that you move at, and you're not comfortable with that decision. You're just scared of losing. Ooh, you're just you're just scared of missing out on an opportunity. Sometimes it's okay to miss out on people. It's fine to do that. But when you're moving too quick, you're just you're just gonna put yourself through hell and put them through hell. Don't be in a relationship. Don't do that at all. If you get into relationships and suddenly forget about your friends. Your family and people like who matter to you before that person was there, you don't deserve to be in a relationship and you should not be in a relationship. Um, because do I even have to fucking explain that one? Are you weird? Don't do that. Don't fucking do that. There's no like, because, because again, if that's how you move, that means. That if anyone else comes along who's interesting and whatever, you will leave your person for that person. Facts, bro. Like, that's uh, that's all that's going to happen. You can't be trusted if that's how you move. If you don't value your people like that, if you go ghost, you know, like every time you're in a relationship, don't be in a relationship. If you don't know how to talk about your issues and you, and you climb up and and you get, turn to a ball and you give people the sign treatment, that's not a proper way to deal with issues in your relationship, and you shouldn't be in one. How about that? You should not be in one. If you want to play the silent game, fucking get a mime career, you dumb, ugly, fucking dumb idiot, and stop, stop being in relationships because you're bad at them. Stop that. You're not good at them. You're not good at them. Um, if you feel like, uh, that you're always in competition with your partner, don't be in a relationship because that's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard ever. Um, you could really, like, you probably suck alligator penis, bro. Like, I just got to keep it a buck with you. Like what, like what, is, what even is that? You think you're in a competition? Oh, I just feel like you're so this and you're so shut the fuck up. I feel like you're a dumb idiot bitch. That's what I think. That's what I feel like. Stupid. Don't ever do that. Y'all dumbass niggas always want to be in fucking relationships for no reason at all. Just don't be, you know, just don't be, just don't, just forever. Don't do that. You're, y'all, you're not good at it. Like, you're not good at it. At some point. You got to just know your limit and be like, wow, I'm just not good at this. Let me stop doing that because I suck. That's fine. And just hug that L, you know, nothing to it. Nothing to it indeed, Coco. Man, it's been a blast for tonight's Beyond the Swanky podcast. Thank you, Coco, as always, for coming in, making sure that we sound good and we, we have some good conversations now uh, with our podcast. I, because, T, I think we might have forgot to mention this. Uh, this podcast is not going to be for everybody, right? Um, but if you're rocking with it, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're watching the video version uh, on it at KLP Entertainment. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that way you guys don't miss out on next new content from us over here at KLP Entertainment. That's going to wrap it up here, our show tonight. Of course, the Beyond Swinky podcast. Please stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll be coming back into the studio uh, to give you guys another episode of KLP uh, Aftermath Season 4. And again, we want to thank everybody who's listening to us, whether it's on uh, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Pandora, iTunes, Apple Podcasts. We thank you guys so much for your listen and your follows for sure. A share with your friends so that way they can take a listen to it. And also, guys, comment below. We would like to hear from you guys, whether it's good comments or bad comments, because sometimes the things we say on here may not appeal to everybody. A lot of people might have a different opinion about what we talk about. But please comment below. Just be nice. You ain't got to cuss us out. 
It's just our opinion. But comment below because we really do want to know. We really want to engage with you guys. And we really want to have a good conversation about this topic of conversation here today. Of course, again, that's going to wrap it up here. The Beyond Swanky Podcast. I've been your host, KELP Kennedy Lucas, saying so long. Stay safe. Stay swanky. Peace.